I'd like you to uh, pay attention to the title page. Don't you dare start with 1 Nephi chapter 1, verse 1. You'll miss the exciting title page. I'm going to teach from the title page today. It's an account written by the hand of Mormon. Now, think, think about that. That's incredible. It's written to the Lamanites who are a remnant of the house of Israel and also to the Jew and the Gentile. It was sealed by the hand of Moroni. You know, he paid his the life, he paid the price with his life for that privilege. And the interpretation thereof by the gift of God. How many books do you have that have been interpreted by the gift of God? Now in paragraph two, we get the two purposes for the Book of Mormon. If I were you, I would keep these purposes foremost in your mind every day of your studies throughout the entire school year. These two purposes are of great importance. First, this book is to show unto the remnant of the house of Israel what great things the Lord has done for their fathers, and that they may know the covenants of the Lord, that they are not cast off forever. So that's purpose one, relates to the house of Israel and the covenants that God made with his covenant children. Purpose number two is for the convincing of the Jew and the Gentile that Jesus is the Christ, the eternal God. Now here we get back to that little subtitle, Another Testament of Jesus Christ. This is the principal figure in the Book of Mormon. Don't you worry about the weights and the measures and the animals and the history on the wars and the rumors of wars. Those are just couching in the environment of the day. But you remember that the purpose of the book is to review the covenants that God made with the house of Israel and to convince the Jew and the Gentile that Jesus is the Christ. Now let's look at this line that on the title page that says, Translated by Joseph Smith, Jr. What an incredible statement that is. To put that in context, think of the King James translators who translated the Holy Bible. There were 50 scholars who translated for seven years to give us the King James version of the Bible. They translated at the rate of one page of scripture per day. Today, we work a lot with translators. We're translating scripture. We're translating other documents into many, many languages. We work with the best translators around, and they've got good equipment. They've got lexicons. They've got spell checkers. They've got computers, dictionaries. Our best translators can translate scripture at the rate of one page per day. The prophet Joseph Smith started translating in earnest on April 7th, 1829. He had the translation completed at the end of June 1829. That's less than three months. It's 85 days. He was probably working about 55 of those days on the translation. The rest of the time he was moving and re uh, trying to avoid people who were after him, and he filed for a copyright. He had to, uh, well, at one time he ran out of paper. With all of those, and he had revelations concerning uh, about 13 other revelations that were recorded in the Doctrine and Covenants. With all of that traffic going on in his mind, he translated this work at the rate of about 8 to 10 pages per day. That is absolutely incredible. You know, we feel really triumphant if we can read the Book of Mormon in three months. He translated it in three months. That is really a remarkable feat. I remember a few years ago, the First Presidency invited the Quorum of the Twelve in to see portions of the original manuscript of the Book of Mormon, along with portions of the printer's manuscript. And I looked at that very carefully. 
it was a thrill to me to see how rare were the editorial marks of correction. When you read that little line there, it says, translated by Joseph Smith, Jr., know that that is a very, very significant statement. Joseph Smith was not the author of this book. Who were the major authors? Well, there was Nephi and Jacob and Mormon and Moroni. And I might add Isaiah because Isaiah was quoted so very frequently in uh, the Book of Mormon. All of these major writers were eyewitnesses of the Lord Jesus Christ, as was the inspired translator, the prophet Joseph Smith.